or Khmer Buddhism has existed since at least the 5th century. In its earliest form, it was a type of Mahayana Buddhism. Today, the predominant form of Buddhism in Cambodia is Theravada Buddhism. It is enshrined in the Cambodian constitution as the official religion of the country. Theravada Buddhism has been the Cambodian state religion since the 13th century, except during the Khmer Rouge period. As of 2013, it was estimated that 97.9% .9 of the population are Buddhists. The history of Buddhism in Cambodia spans a number of successive kingdoms and empires. Buddhism entered Cambodia via two different streams. The earliest forms of Buddhism, along with Hindu influences, entered the kingdom of Funan with Hindu merchants. In later history, a second stream of Buddhism entered Khmer culture during the Angkor Empire when Cambodia absorbed the various Buddhist traditions of the Mon kingdoms of Dvaravati and Harapunchai. For the first thousand years of Khmer history, Cambodia was ruled by a series of Hindu kings with an occasional Buddhist king, such as Jayavarman I of Funan, Jayavarman VII, who became a Mahayanist, and Suryavarman I. A variety of Buddhist traditions coexisted peacefully throughout Cambodian lands under the tolerant auspices of Hindu kings and the neighboring Mon Theravada kingdoms. Possible Early Missions Unconfirmed Sinhalese sources assert that missionaries of King Ashoka introduced Buddhism into Southeast Asia approximately in the 3rd century BC. Various Buddhist sects competed with Brahmanism and indigenous animistic religions over approximately the next millennium. During this period, Indian culture was highly influential. Funan The Funan kingdom that flourished between 100 BC and 500 CE was Hindu, with the kings of Funan sponsoring the worship of Vishnu and Shiva. Buddhism was already present in Funan as a secondary religion in this era. Buddhism began to assert its presence from about year 450 onward and was observed by the Chinese traveler aging toward the close of the 7th century. Two Buddhist monks from Funan, named Mandrasena and Sagabara, took up residency in China in the 5th to 6th centuries and translated several Buddhist sutras from Sanskrit into Chinese. Among these texts is the Mahayana Mahaprajaparamita Manjushraparvarta Sutra. This text was separately translated by both monks. The Bodhisattva Manjushri is a prominent figure in this text. Chenla the kingdom of Chenla replaced Funan and endured from 500 to 700. Buddhism was weakened in the Chenla period, but survived, as seen in the inscriptions of Sambor Pre Kuk, 626, and those of Siam Reap dealing with the erection of statues of Avalokiteshvara, 791. Some pre angkorian statuary in the Mekong Delta region indicate the existence of Sanskrit-based Sarvastivada Buddhism. Khmer-style Buddha images are abundant from the period of 600 to 800. Many Mahayana Bodhisattva images also date from this period, often found alongside the predominantly Hindu images of Shiva and Vishnu. An inscription from Ta Prom Temple in Siam Reap Province, dated about 625, states that the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha are flourishing. Angkor The transition from Hindu God King to Mahayana Bodhisattva King was probably gradual and imperceptible. 
The prevailing Vaishnavite and Shaivite faith traditions gave way to the worship of the Gautama Buddha and the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara. The Buddhist Salandra kingdom exercised suzerainty over Cambodia as a vassal state during the end of the 8th and the beginning of the 9th centuries. King Jayavarman II, 802-869, the first real Khmer king of the Angkor Empire, proclaimed himself Hindu god-king and identified himself with Shiva. Nevertheless, he was increasingly friendly to and supportive of Mahayana Buddhist influence throughout his kingdom. Mahayana Buddhism became increasingly established in his empire. The form of Mahayana Buddhism that was propagated in the Srivijaya lands was similar to the Pala dynasty Buddhism of Bengal and of the Nalanda University in northern India. The Bengal University of Nalanda in Magadha, now Behar, was the theological center of Mahayana Buddhism under the protection of the Pala dynasty, 7501060. Shivaist interpretations of Buddhism, tinged with tantric mysticism, that may have revived portions of pre-Aryan northeastern Indian faith traditions, were worked out in Magadha and then were exported throughout insular and peninsular Southeast Asia, particularly to Java. Yashavarman I, 889-910, who ruled from the vicinity of Rolas in the late 9th century, seems to have been a Shivite Buddhist influenced by Nalanda syncretism. His successors, notably Jayavarman IV, dedicated themselves to Hindu trinity such as Vishnu and Brahma, as well as to Shiva, with whom they continued to be identified by hereditary families of priests. Rajendravarman II studied Buddhism intensely. The Salandra dynasty also built the fantastic Mahayana Buddhist temple Borobudur, 750-850, in Java. Borobudur appears to have been the inspiration for the later fabulous Angkor building projects in Cambodia, particularly Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom. The primary form of Buddhism practiced in Cambodia during Angkor times was Mahayana Buddhism, strongly influenced with tantric tendencies. The prevalence of Tantrayana in Java, Sumatra, and Cambodia, Cambodia, a fact now definitely established by modern researches into the character of Mahayana Buddhism and Saivism in these parts of the Indian Orient. Already in Cambodia inscription of the 9th century, there is definite evidence of the teaching of Tantric texts at the court of Jayavarman II. In a Cambodia record of the 11th century, there is a reference to the Tantras of the Paramis, and images of Habadra, definitely a Tantric divinity, have been recovered from amidst the ruins of Angkor Thom. A number of Cambodia inscriptions refer to several kings who were initiated into the great secret, Vraguya, by their Hindu Brahmin gurus. The Saiva records make obvious records to tantric doctrines that had crept into Saivism. But it was in Java and Sumatra that Tantrayana seems to have attained greater importance. Their Mahayana Buddhism and Shaivism both deeply imbued with tantric influences, are to be seen often blending with one another during this period. The Sanghyang Kamahayanakan, consisting of Sanskrit verses explained by an old Javanese commentary, professed to teach the Mahayana and Mantrayana. The presence and growing influence of Buddhism continued as the Angkor Empire increased in power. King Yosavarman built many Buddhist temples in 887 to 889, representing the mandala of Mount Meru, 
the mythical axis of the world. The largest of these temples is Phnom Kandal or Central Mountain which lies near the heart of the Angkor complex. King Rajendravarman II 944 to 968 studied Buddhism intensely. Although he decided to remain a Shivaist, he appointed a Buddhist, Kavandraramathana, chief minister. Kavandraramathana built shrines to Buddha and Shiva. Jayavarman V, son of Rajendravarman, also remained a devout of Shiva. He, too, permitted his own chief minister, Kirtapandita, to foster Mahayana Buddhist learning and divination. Suryavarman I Suryavarman I, 1006-1050, is considered the greatest of the Buddhist kings, with the exception of Jayavarman VII. The origins of Suryavarman I are unclear, but evidence suggests that he began his career in northeastern Cambodia. He came to the throne after a period of disputes between rival claims to the Khmer throne. Claim to the Khmer throne did not exclusively include paternal lines, but also recognized the royal maternal line giving prominence to whichever line successfully supported the legitimacy of the claim. A strong proponent of Mahayana Buddhism, he did not interfere or obstruct the growing presence and dissemination of Theravada Buddhism during his reign. Indeed, inscriptions indicate he sought wisdom from wise Mahayanists and Hinayanists, and at least somewhat disestablished the Sivakaivalya family's hereditary claims to being chief priests, Purahatar. Suryavarman's posthumous title of Nirvanapada, the king who has gone to Nirvana, is the strongest evidence that he was a Buddhist. Jayavarman 7 Jayavarman seven eleven eighty one to twelve fifteen, the most significant Khmer Buddhist king, worked tirelessly to establish Buddhism as the state religion of Angkor. Jayavarman seven was a Mahayana Buddhist, and he regarded himself to be a Dharma king, a Bodhisattva, whose duty was to save the people through service and merit making, liberating himself in the process. Jayavarman withdrew his devotion from the old gods and began to identify more openly with Buddhist traditions. His regime marked a clear dividing line with the old Hindu past. Before 1200, art in the temples mostly portrayed scenes from the Hindu pantheon. After 1200, Buddhist scenes began to appear as standard motifs. During Jayavarman VII's reign, there was a shift away from the concept of Devaraja God King toward the concept of the Sangha, the concept of monks. In former times, great effort and resources were invested into building temples for elite Brahmin priests and God Kings. Under Jayavarman, these resources were redirected to building libraries, monastic dwellings, public works, and more earthly projects accessible to the common people. While Jayavarman VII himself was Mahayana Buddhist, the presence of Theravada Buddhism was increasingly evident. This Sinhalese-based Theravada Buddhist orthodoxy was first propagated in Southeast Asia by Tailing, Mon, monks in the 11th century and together with Islam in the 13th century in southern insular reaches of the region, spread as a popularly based movement among the people. Apart from inscriptions, such as one of Lopbury, there were other signs that the religious venue of Suvanabhumi were changing. Tamalinda, the Khmer monk believed to be the son of Jayavarman VII, 
took part in an 1180 Burmese-led mission to Sri Lanka to study the Pali Canon and on his return in 1190 had adepts of the Sinhala doctrine in his court. Cho Talon, who led a Chinese mission into Angkor in 1296-97 confirms the significant presence of Pali Theravada monks in the Khmer capital. Decline of Angkor and the Emergence of a Theravada Kingdom After the 13th century Theravada Buddhism became the state religion of Cambodia, King Jayavarman VII had sent his son Tamalinda to Sri Lanka to be ordained as a Buddhist monk and study Theravada Buddhism according to the Pali scriptural traditions. Tamalinda then returned to Cambodia and promoted Buddhist traditions according to the Theravada training he had received, galvanizing and energizing the long-standing Theravada presence that had existed throughout the Angkor Empire for centuries. During the time Tamalinda studied at the famous Mahavihara Monastery in Sri Lanka, 1180-1190, a new dynamic type of Theravada Buddhism was being preached as the true faith in Sri Lanka. This form of Buddhism was somewhat militant and highly disciplined in reaction to the wars with the Tamil that nearly destroyed Buddhism in Sri Lanka in the 9th and 10th centuries. As Theravada Buddhism struggled for survival in Sri Lanka, it developed a resiliency that generated a renaissance throughout the Buddhist world and would eventually spread across Burma, Chiang Mai, the Mon kingdoms, Lana, Sukhothai, Laos, and Cambodia. In the 13th century, wandering missionaries from the Mon Khmer-speaking parts of Siam, Burma, Cambodia, and Sri Lanka played an important part in this process. When Prince Tamalinda returned after ten years of ordination, he was a thera, a senior monk, capable of administering ordination into this vigorous Theravada lineage, which insisted on orthodoxy and rejected Mahayana innovations such as tantric practices. The mass conversion of Khmer society to Theravada Buddhism amounted to a nonviolent revolution every all level of society. Scholars struggle to account for this sudden and inexplicable transformation of Khmer civilization. Theravada Buddhism succeeded because it was inclusive and universal in its outreach recruiting the disciples and monks from not only the elites and court, but also in the villages and among the peasants, enhancing its popularity among the Khmer folk. The post Angkor period saw the dramatic rise of the Pali Theravada tradition in Southeast Asia and concomitant decline of the Brahmanic and Mahayana Buddhist religious traditions. A 1423 Thai account of a mission to Sri Lanka mentions eight Khmer monks who again brought Orthodox Mahavihara sect of Singhalese order to Kampuchea. This particular event belied, however, the profound societal shift that was taking place from priestly class structure to a village-based monastic system in Theravada lands. While adhering to the monastic discipline, monks developed their wats, or temple monasteries, not only into moral religious, but also education, social service, and cultural centers for the people. Wats became the main source of learning and popular education. Early Western explorers, settlers, and missionaries reported widespread literacy among the male populations of Burma, Thailand, Kampuchea, Laos, and Vietnam. Until the 19th century, literacy rates exceeded those of Europe in most, if not all, Theravada lands. In Kampuchea, Buddhism became the transmitter of Khmer language and culture. 
With the rise of Siam in the west and Vietnam in the east, the classical Angkor Empire disappeared and the beginning of present-day Cambodia began. Cambodia became from this time forward a Theravada Buddhist nation. Buddhist Middle Ages The Jinnakalamali gives an account of the cultural connections between Cambodia and Sri Lanka in the 15th century. It states that 1967 years after the Mahaparinibbana of the Buddha, eight monks headed by Mahananasiddhi from Cambodia with 25 monks from Nabaspura in Thailand came to Sri Lanka to receive the Umpasampada ordination at the hands of the Sinhalese Mahatharas. As Angkor collapsed under the advancing jungles, the center of power of the Theravada Cambodia moved south toward present-day Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh was originally a small riverside market center where the Mekong River and the Tunnel Sap River converge. Phnom Penh was founded when Lady Penh found a four-faced Buddha floating down the river on a koki tree during the flooding season. She retrieved the Buddha image and had the Wat Phnom constructed to house the image. The four-faced Buddha, Buddha facing the four directions, is important in Khmer Buddhist iconography, signifying the establishment of the kingdom of the Buddha of the future, Mithraya, who is often identified with the Buddha king of Cambodia. The type of Buddhism practiced in medieval Cambodia has been widely studied by Professor Francois Bizet and his colleagues at the École Française d'Extreme Orient. They have identified tantric and esoteric elements in this tradition and thus call it Tantric Theravada. After 1431, when the Cambodian kings permanently abandoned Angkor due to a Siamese invasion, the royal court was located on Udon Mountain, a few miles north of Phnom Penh. Siamese incursions from the west and Vietnamese invasions from the east weakened the Khmer Empire. The Vietnamese invaders attempted to suppress Theravada Buddhism and force the Khmer people to practice Mahayana Buddhism. The Siamese, on the other hand, would periodically invade Cambodia and attempt to drive out the unbelievers in an attempt to protect the Theravada religion. This power struggle between the two ascendant powers continued until the arrival of the Europeans in the 16th century. Colonial Era Buddhism continued to flourish in Cambodia in the 16th century. King Ong Chan, 1516-1566, a relative of King Dhammaraja, was a devout Buddhist. He built pagodas in his capital and many Buddhist shrines in different parts of Cambodia. In order to popularize Buddhism, King Setha, 1576-1549, son and successor of King Baram Rechia, restored the great towers of the Angkor Wat, which had become a Buddhist shrine by the 16th century. Each successive wave of European influence was accompanied by Catholic missionaries, but Theravada Buddhism proved surprisingly resistant to foreign attempts to convert the Khmer people. During the colonial period, the peace was periodically breached by outbreaks of religiously motivated violence, including periodic millenarian revolts. During the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries, Thailand's involvement in Cambodian politics extended Thai influence into religious matters as well. On King Norodom's invitation, Monks from the Thai Dhammayudika Nikaya established a Dhammayudika presence in Cambodia. The newly formed Thaumayat order benefited from royal patronage, but frequently came into conflict with the existing Mohanike, Maha Nikaya, lineage. 
The Thaumaeid were sometimes accused of holding loyalty to the Thai court rather than to the Khmer nation. During the era of French rule, convulsions of violence led by Buddhist holy men would periodically break out against the French. Significant advances were made in the education of Cambodian monks, both in specifically Buddhist topics and more general studies. Primary education of Cambodian children continued to take place at temple schools. Monks were also encouraged to become involved in community development projects. Khmer Rouge era. In 1975, when the communist Khmer Rouge took control of Cambodia, they tried to completely destroy Buddhism and very nearly succeeded when considering this religion as reactionary. By the time of the Vietnamese invasion in 1979, nearly every monk and religious intellectual had been either murdered or driven into exile, and nearly every temple and Buddhist temple and library had been destroyed. The Khmer Rouge policies towards Buddhism, which included the forced disrobing of monks, the destruction of monasteries, and, ultimately, the execution of uncooperative monks effectively destroyed Cambodia's Buddhist institutions. Monks who did not flee and avoided execution lived among the laity, sometimes secretly performing Buddhist rituals for the sick or afflicted. Estimates of the number of monks in Cambodia prior to the ascension of the Khmer Rouge vary, ranging between 65,000 and 80,000. By the time of the Buddhist restoration in the early 1980s, the number of Cambodian monks worldwide was estimated to be fewer than 3,000. The patriarchs of both Cambodian Nikayas perished sometime during the period 1975 to 1978, though the cause of their deaths is not known. Due to their association with the Thai monarchy, monks of the Thaumaid order may have been singled out for persecution. Post-Khmer Rouge Era Following the defeat of the Khmer Rouge by Vietnamese forces, Buddhism initially remained officially suppressed in Cambodia. Following challenges to the legitimacy of the Vietnamese-backed People's Republic of Kampuchea, policies towards Buddhism began to ease starting in the summer of 1979. A group of monks who had been exiled and reordained in Vietnam during the Khmer Rouge period were sent to Cambodia, and in 1981 one of their number, Venerable Thep Phong, was elected the first Sangharaja of a new unified Cambodia Sangha, officially abolishing the division between the Thaumaid order and the Mohanake. The ordination of new monks was sponsored by the government as a public show of piety and lifted restrictions on ordination. Following the withdrawal of the Vietnamese military, the newly renamed Cambodian People's Party sought to align itself with the Buddhist Sangha, declaring Buddhism to be Cambodia's state religion in a 1991 policy statement. In 1991, King Sihanouk returned from exile and appointed a new Sangharaja for each of the Thaumaeit and Mohanake orders, effectively marking the end of the unified system created under Vietnamese rule in 1981.